Tervetuloa seuraamaan Maailmankuvia-sarjaa. Tänään meillä on hyvin erityislaatuinen vieras. Hän on Alan Craig. Hän on skotlantilainen medio, joka asuu tätä nykyä Suomessa. Uh, welcome Alan to the Our Show. This is a world view series when we are talking about uh, how people became who they are. Thank you Timo for inviting me here and um, allow me to put my um, ideas of spiritualism um, uh, to you and to your audience. Um, my first ideas of um, my own sp spiritual abilities were very um, obvious to me when I was a young boy. How old you were? What happened? I was about um, seven year old and I've always been aware of energy and I've always felt energy but the, the, the issue for me was even though my grandparents were mediums um, at that age I was too young to be involved in, in mm -hmm. what they were doing. And it's quite interesting because if I, if I just take it back a little further, I suppose my first connection to spiritualism was actually when I was a baby of six months old. Mm -hmm. um, because I was um, christened in my um, grandparents' spiritualist church. And um, what's interesting about that is the fact that my grandfather um, taped the whole event and then it was on a little kind of uh, reel and then as I got older a friend put it onto a CD disc for me so I have that um, event captured for life and when I listen to it um, it's an amazing um, to me it's an amazing event simply because I listen to the medium who's actually doing the, the naming as they call it and I listen to her going into trance and I listen to her um, giving me my spiritual name um, which is Morning Star. Um, and it didn't mean anything to me when I was young but as I've got older and as um, my own spiritual um, awakening happens I, I listen to it more and more and it, it becomes um, more important to me to to sort of um, think of the idea of as, as mo more spiritual people, more spiritual self than just um, this physical entity that we are. Um, it was it was. Um, I, I suppose sometimes when I when I just listen to it, there's a resonance that hits my energy, and a knowing that. Um, that's who I am and, and certain things that the, the lady said, um, she said um, that you know I would have a love of animals and all God's creatures and I do. I love animals. I have a really strong bond um, to animals mm -hmm. um, and there's, a, there's, a, there's this wonderful compassion that I've never lost mm -hmm. and I try to share it with people. Um, it's very nice. Yeah. Can I ask a little bit? Um, you mentioned that uh, your parents and grandparents yes. was also a spiritual persons. Well, my grandparents were spiritual as in they were spiritual mediums. Even mediums? Yes, they were mediums, uh, yes. Um, if I understood right that you are coming uh, from a uh, Scotland area. Yes. Yeah. Is this a uh, very usual thing there that there is uh, also mediums in that time when your uh, grandparents was uh, young and uh, they... I, I think there's, there's a strong identity with the Spiritualist Church yeah. um, going through the UK um, all the way from the Victorian times. Mm -hmm. And I think possibly even in the 60s there would have been a stronger connection. It was more of a kind of Christian spiritualism, uh, that the Bible was more important within the spiritual church, especially especially in my grandfather's case, because uh, um, when I listen to that, that little recording I have, my grandfather is um, uh, using a Bible and, and reading passages from the Bible. So they took that Christianity from the Bible and brought it into the spiritualism um, within their own church. And there is that strong identity 
of um, spiritualism within, I said, within the UK and Scotland. Mm. I think nowadays it's not as strong. Mm. Um, the churches are not as full as they, they used to be. Um, and it is quite um, a niche thing to do if you're involved in spiritualism. Mm -hmm. um, but can I, I will go back to when I was a young boy and feeling energies and not knowing what it was and being quite a shy young boy. And um, in a sense, you know, um, being afraid of the dark when you're a young boy. And, mm. and the funny thing was that in the house that I lived, um, there was two levels to it. And my bedroom was up the top level. And mm. for some reason, the light bulb on the top landing always went out. Even when my father used to screw in a new light bulb, within a day it had gone. It, it would just go out all the time. There was no reason why it did, it just did. And I'm a young boy standing there looking up in the darkness and wondering, can I get up those stairs? And I used to feel this energy behind me. Now I know as I got older, it was, it was obviously um, one of my spiritual guides who was trying to reassure me that it's okay, it's okay. Mm. But being a young boy and not understanding that energy, it made me more f scared, it made me mm. more frightened. Mm. And I used to run up those stairs and jump into my bed and put the covers over me. Um, but those are kind of early experiences as all, all children. Um, a lot of children don't, don't understand um, what's going on around them. Could you talk about those uh, feelings and experiences, what you had uh, with your parents or with your grandparents? Well, as I says, you know, um, it's such a funny thing, the fact that um, everyone used to say to me, oh, grandma's house is full of bad energy. There's, there's lots of things in there. And I used to go in and feel nothing. I used to go in and feel nothing wrong. And, and I used to think, what is it they're feeling that I'm not feeling? How can, how can I not feel this bad energy that they're feeling? Because every time I walked into my grandparents' house, I just felt this lovely, relaxing, gentle, soft mm. energy. And again, I didn't realize that maybe it was people's imaginations that were playing tricks on them because my grandparents were mediums and people didn't understand what that meant. They just connected it to mm. things that shouldn't be done Mm. energy that may be bringing bad spirits mm. and I believe that it was people's imagination that caused them to sort of um, think there was things going on in the house. Mm. Um, but my parents, especially my mum, um, was frightened of it. Um, even, though my, even though she had been to seances with my, um, in my grandparents' group, when they were doing um, physical mediumship and there was pieces of furniture rising up off yeah. the floor yeah. and I think it frightened my mum yeah. and she kept me away from it. I was kept away from that side, that mediumship side um, for quite a long time. Yeah. Um, and I remember my auntie coming into her house when I was about 14 and she had been talking to a medium in the church mm. and the medium said to her that there is, a, there is a medium in that family and all they have to do is pull back the curtains to allow things to develop. Mm. And my mum told us that. So she had us looking at candles and to see if we could see colours in the candles. But it didn't go any further than that because Again, she was too afraid to do anything about it. But I will say this, I was too young. Mm -hmm. I was too young to get, to open myself up and to think about those things. I was far too young. Did they try to protect you, you about those things, what the, their parents had? I, I never really spoke to my parents about my feeling of energy. It, mm. it didn't transpire. It mm. didn't come out. It, we didn't talk about it. I think, in fact, I think there was only one, one time when I was telling um, my mum that the blankets were being pulled off of me when I was in bed, and she didn't believe me, uh, thinking I had an over 
active imagination as a young child. That, um, so that was just forgotten about. But mm. I knew what happened. Yeah. I knew, mm. I knew what happened. Mm. Um, but I believe now it was just some mischievous kids, uh, spiritual kids that were mm. just playing tricks on me. Yeah. Um, but I never really, can I say, had my spiritual awakening mm. until I was 38. Okay, dog sometime. Because um, I had been just, like most mediums, I think, or most sensitives, I was quite aware that I was different from people. Mm. I was quite aware that I preferred my own company. Mm. I loved nature, and I could get lost in my own imagination. Mm. And I sort of just went through life without having a purpose, without having a direction mm. in what I wanted to do. Mm. And I was actually working as a postman in the post office yeah. um, for quite a good number of years. Um, for about, yeah, I think I went into that when I was 22. Mm. And um, I always had this thing in my mind about educating myself because I felt I'd failed at education. Mm. I f I'd left school with a couple of O-levels and I felt as if I wanted to redeem myself to show that I was intelligent mm. because I felt I wasn't intelligent. Mm. But that was in the back of my mind, but nothing happened with that at that time. Mm. I went, entered the post office and was quite happy doing what I was doing. Until about the age of 38, and then I had the most amazing spiritual experiences. Before we are entering the TET, um, did you live always, uh, when you was uh, growing up age, uh, until 38, did you live uh, nearby to nature? You was taught that uh, you loved nature and you was felt uh, compassion to the animals. Did you live also to the, by the nature? My, um, my, my parents' house where I stayed, um, there was um, what we call a um, small, uh, small wooded area, mm -hmm. which I used to go when I was a young boy, mm -hmm. and I used to get lost. <laughs> mm -hmm. I used to get lost in my head in that area. I could spend hours there on my own and just be lost as a little boy, um, enjoying that energy, enjoying the nature, mm -hmm. enjoying listening to the birds, enjoying um, anything connected, enjoying the sound of the water as it trickled by. Uh, everything else was totally obliv oblivious to me. Mm. Um, but that didn't last because I think once I reached about 11 or 12, it changed. Mm. I think it started to become, um, I lost that innocence mm. of a child and, and everything changed. Um, but I never lost my connection to nature. I never. Um, lost my connection to animals. I still have that that wonderful connection of just being um, in a natural surrounding and enjoying that energy. Uh, what kind of connection it has been? Uh, is it uh, uh, like uh, empowering you, or what? Ca what kind of feelings it brought to you? This uh, peace, nature connection, peace, peace. tranquility, yes. and that to me is empowerment. Mm. It made me aware of just how important it was to be. Um, just enjoying the silence yes, and getting away from all the busyness of the, the, mm. um, the city, mm. all the noises and mm. um, people and cars and the electromagnetic fields and the, uh, the electricity to get away in, 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 into the, the countryside. Because I used to go home walking mm. um, with my friends as I got older and get into um, the Trossachs as a kind of nature reserve where a lot of people go and enjoy the, mm. the, the tranquility of nature. And for me, as I said, Timo, it was more about just the peace and the tranquility. The yes. feeling of being um, isolated was actually a good feeling for me, mm. to, to, to feel silence, mm. um, because it made me sort of go inside myself and, and feel that connection of my mm. own inner self, my own spiritual self. Yeah. Yeah. So then you turn it 
38 and something very extraordinary happened. Yeah, it was uh, huge. Um, out, of, out of the blue, I just started having these spiritual experiences. Um, and they all happened mostly at night time because, and I don't know why, but what was going on was, um, I, I, I always remember this time because it was so special. I started, first of all, having premonitions. Mm -hmm. I was seeing things happen before they happened. Yes. And not always nice things. And they were all based around people I knew. It was, um, and when I was working in the post office, I um, got to know my customers very well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was a... Um, I seen two different people having accidents. Nothing serious. Well, serious enough in the sense where the, um, I was, what I was seeing was um, the lady walking out of her, of her house, opening her gate, and there was snow on the ground, and she slipped and fell, and I seen the ambulance there, and I, I knew instantly that she broke her leg. I seen this happening maybe four months before it happened. When, when I got these images, there was no snow on the ground. It wasn't cold at all. And I dismissed it at first mm -hmm. because I thought it was just a dream. But obviously as the time went by and the four months had, come, had passed and I hadn't seen this person, I bumped into her husband. Mm -hmm. And I says, hi, how, how's, um, how's your wife? I've not seen her for a while. And he then told me the story that, well, you know, the snow was on the ground um, a couple of weeks ago. She just walked out of the house and opened her gate and she slipped and she fell and we had to phone an ambulance. Mm -hmm. And she was taken to hospital, broken leg. When you had this uh, first precognition, uh, how did it happen? Uh, did, it, did it work in, uh, in the dream or uh, did you were uh, fully awake no it was it was while i was sleeping yeah it was while i was sleeping yeah, yeah. that's why that's why i thought it was a dream uh, but uh, did you were inside of that dream con a consciousness from yourself i was aware of myself watching the event mm. take mm. place it was very vivid it was very mm. clear what was going on yeah it wasn't um you know, yeah, it was very vivid, I was, and it was very precise and short. Mm. And again, I, I kept it in my mind. And then when I was told it actually happened, then I thought, okay, right, let's see where this goes. Mm. And then I continued to have more. Mm. Um, Can you tell that part more? Yeah. The next one was actually another person on that, district I used to work on and again it was um, it was a doctor Dr. Jones and he was decorating he was on a ladder and he fell off the ladder and this time he broke his foot okay. and then um, and it was uh, again the next time I seen the doctor I see him coming out of his house in crutches and I just started laughing because not because he'd broken his foot because I was remembering what was going on and seeing what had happened before. And then I just, Dr. Jones told me that he'd fell, he fell off his ladder um, when he was decorating. And I, you know, I thought, okay, this is quite interesting. What's going on here? Why am I getting this? What's going on? Because this was only the start of what was, what was happening. Did those happen uh, um, close off each other? They happened close, yes. Um, now, my memory is not as precise as it should be, but I know that they happened within six months of each other. Okay. Yeah, so it was close. It wasn't years yes. apart, it was close. Mm. Um, but I also had other dreams, which are so crazy that you couldn't make it up. There was a, a neighbour of my mum's, and my mum stayed in a terrace houses, mm. and... It was actually the minister. Now, the minister had his own manse, but he wouldn't live in it. He wanted to live beside the people, so he lived in one of these terrace houses. Mm -hmm. And he used to get a lot of um, people come to his, 
to his house for help and money a lot mm. of the time. And one time, one of the precognitive dreams that I had was, and it's quite interesting because it's like looking through a camera. What I'm seeing is I'm behind this person in the minister's house. And this person, and I'm watching what's going on. My mm -hmm. consciousness is watching what's going on. Yes. My spiritual self is watching what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I become aware that something um, is happening that shouldn't be happening in the sense where this man was looking out the window and I see a police car outside. And I'm aware that this man is robbing the house. And the craziest thing happens, the fact that he doesn't run out the back door. He doesn't run out the back door, he goes up the stairs. Now in these terrace houses, there is um, a loft. Mm -hmm. He goes into the loft and there's a skylight, which allows you to go into the roof. I see him opening the skylight and going onto the roof and then walking along the roof. Remember, these are terrace houses, they're all connected. And he, he goes over to the fourth skylight, because that's the only one that's open, and he drops into it. So he's in another house. Mm. And I'm aware of what's going on here, but the problem with this was the owner of the house heard him dropping in. They heard the footsteps and took him outside and gave him to the police officers. Mm. Now, that's a crazy thing to see, isn't it? Seems to be. It seems to be crazy. Mm. Maybe that's why they were showing me these things. I phoned my mum. I think it was only a week after I'd had that, that, um, that dream. And she recited word by word, image by image, what had happened to the exact detail of what I'd seen. Mm. And, I, and, I, and I just thought that, wow, that's... What is going on here? Why am I seeing all of these things in the future happening? Because I didn't know. Mm. I was very sort of taken aback by it and wondering where it was all going. And um, because, of all of the, because of all the things that were happening to me, there was so much more happening to me. This is just a little tiny part. Mm. Just a start. Just a start. Just a start. I had, um, as I became more open mm -hmm. my, in my work, um, I had uh, friends starting to come up t to me and asking me for the usual lottery numbers. Who's going to win the football match today? Yeah, those usual questions. Those usual questions, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, lottery numbers I could never give, but mm -hmm. if it was like um, a football match, Nine times out of ten, I gave him the right answer. The thing was, there was one man in that, in that um, office who didn't like me. He didn't like what was going on. Um, he didn't like the fact that I was talking about spiritual things. Mm. And he thought, I was, um, he thought I was mad, a crank, and there was something wrong with me. And the interesting thing about that I'm, is for me... I then had a dream about him. I seen him having an accident. I seen him in his post office uniform. I seen him walking on the pavement, one foot off and catching it on the ground, tumbling over. And I knew instantly that he'd smashed his knee and I knew he was going to be off his work for quite some time, six to nine months. Mm. I didn't tell him that. And what I also found out as well is the fact that because I seen it more in the distance, mm. I realised what I was seeing was maybe years away. Yeah. Because the other ones I was seeing close up. Mm. So I'd worked out this that I'd seen it further in the distance and it was going to happen in a couple of years' time. Mm. I didn't tell Taffy his name was, he was Welsh. Mm. He was Welsh, his name was his nickname was Taffy. Mm. But I told his friend who was a mutual friend of mine what I'd seen. And what happened was I'd actually left the post office because of everything that was going on around me. 
and because of my desire to educate myself, um, I had actually left the post office. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing was, Taffy started delivering to my address with parcels because he was a postman driver. Mm -hmm. So a couple of years later, after what had happened to him, he's, not, he's chapping on my door and, and giving me a parcel. And Len tells me about the accident he had at work, how he smashed his knee and how he was off work for 12 months. And he was so friendly to me. I didn't say a word to him. I just knew that he knew what I had already said that his friend had told him. Yeah. So he became much more open. We didn't talk about spiritual things, mm -hmm. but there was an openness there mm -hmm. that, which wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. So maybe... He started to listen to you. Not so much to me, but maybe spirit were trying to get through to him, yeah. to let him know there's much more mm -hmm. to life than just this physical yes. side to life. Indeed. Um, but there's so much more was going on as well. It wasn't just that. Yeah. In between all that, I was waking up, I was seeing spiritual people at my bedside mm -hmm. who would be there and then gone very quickly. And how, they, all, how they did look like? Well, they, they just looked like us. They yes. were, you know, um, uh, I always remember the woman who was the strongest. I don't know who she was, but she just had normal clothes on. But there was a glow around her. Mm -hmm. There was this energy glow around her, and she yes. just smiled at me. Mm -hmm. And then she was gone. Did you ever recognize those uh, no. who were showing up? No, I no. don't know who they were. No. Could you hear anything uh, that they were saying? or No, just, they, uh, they, no showing their they, they didn't speak to eyes. me. Yeah. I was just seeing them. Yes. There was no communication. Mm -hmm. I was just seeing them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then I used to wake up as well, and I used to see little birds flying about my, my room. Mm. Little angels, little cherubs all mm. flying about my room. Mm. Um, and then I seen the most amazing orbs, mm. orb, huge orbs, yes. two of them. Um, one was complete orange, mm. and one was pink. Mm. And they were just moving slowly around mm. and then mm. out through the wall. You have been uh, always very sensitive, yeah. sensing those energy, how those uh, images, uh, those visions felt. Well, the visions were different because I wasn't really awake. Yeah. So the visions were more about my perception, my, my, uh, my spirit being allowed to see the future in a sense. I think that maybe my um, workers at the time were really wanting to mm. totally wake me up and say, mm. well, hey, are you going to come to work? Are you going to try and develop yourself? Because mm. we I was being bombarded with all of this phenomena. Mm. Seeing things all the time, um, becoming aware of these visions, mm. um, starting to um, know things before I, I, I knew what was going on. Um, and it was the most wonderful time. And it lasted about six months. Yeah. It was continuously, continuously just bombarding me, just making sure that I was paying attention, just to say to me, um, wake up. Mm. It's time to wake up. It's time mm. to understand. Gently wake up call. Yes, it was a gentle wake up call. It was mm. a gentle wake up call over an extended period of time. Mm. Um, and it worked because I started then going to the spiritualist church and going to development groups. Mm. Can you tell about this uh, spiritual church or course? Which one do you say? Well, it's more of a um, what happens in the spiritualist church is um, back home is that. Uh, they have development groups, the open groups, where they allow people to come mm. and find out about these um, abilities they may have, these spiritual abilities, these mediumistic abilities, these psychic abilities. Mm. And in a, 
um, environment that is um, comfortable and friend friendly to to work on those abilities to to understand them, mm. understand the energy, understand um, how how you as a person are are working with that energy. Mm. Um, but that was a long process. Mm. That the uh, spiritual church uh, uh, also offered some uh, uh, explanations uh, to your uh, uh, experiences. Of or? course, yes. yes, yes, definitely. There was always a teacher mm. who would take the um, open group and um, they would obviously take you through exercises and, mm -hmm. and tell you what was going on, what was happening. Mm -hmm. But very much, uh, but also was very much a journey that you had to work out yourself. Yes. There's only so much a teacher can teach mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You have to understand your own energy, your own um, abilities and train them and work with them and um, you know, that creative energy is there, how to open it up and, and how to close it down as well. Mm -hmm. um, I did attend um, the groups for a considerable amount of years and then I moved into um, a home group, shall we say, uh, with friends and we started doing trance. Um, trans medium sh or or shall I say we work towards trying to get into a kind of trans state mm. and see where that would take us so I, over the years I have tried um, to deepen my understanding of the philosophy of um, spiritualism and my and and also look at my own abilities my mediumship abilities and how that fits side by side with with um, uh, the spiritual aspects of being a spiritual person Mm. And taking that into my life, not just with my mediumship, mm. but how it affects me and, and how I connect to other people mm. in my life and what I do. Mm. Um, and can I say that that awakening for me was um, such a change in my life because I left the post office, I went to college, then I went to university, not with a plan, but it's just, I think it was something that I wanted to do. I wanted to... Um, educate myself mm -hmm. and maybe what I was doing was actually allowing a lot of information to flow through my mind that then spirit could use later on. Mm -hmm. Opening up my mind not just to spiritual aspects but also to more rational mm -hmm. um, aspects yeah. that I could obviously tap into as well that maybe helped me in my journey. Mm -hmm. So what you started to studying then when you went to the university? English literature. Yep. English literature. Mm -hmm. um, because if I had a plan, I may have taken a subject that would have taken me into a specific line of work. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, I was draw drawn to English literature and learning about all aspects of literature mm -hmm. from Victorian um, periods up until present day writers. Mm -hmm. It was vast. Mm -hmm. It was vast. Um, and so the creativity there was about... Um, being able to sort of um, connect to different time periods and understand mm. what was going on. Mm. Not easy, because I'm not academic. And I'll hold my hand up and say, I'm not an academic person. So, mm. so university for me was, wasn't the easiest thing to do. So maybe, again, spirit were challenging me. Maybe I was to challenge myself to show how far I could go, mm. to, to show that there is no limitations. The only limitations we, we have is the ones we put on ourselves. Mm. Because when we, be, when we become stuck in that negative mind frame where we doubt ourselves and we, we say we're not good enough or we can't do this, we can't do that, it stops us actually finding out what we can do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the lessons I've learned for this whole journey is to try and be positive and to try new things. Mm -hmm. Because you're, you'll never know what you can achieve unless you try something. And we don't always succeed, but I think that it's always good to try mm. and follow your intuition. Yeah. Your intuition will always lead you to where you should be going. Mm. And a lot of the time, we're in our heads too much. Our minds is very, very strong and it, and it shuts out our intuition. And I've mm. also learned that as well, that intuition is very important. Mm. To follow your 
gut feeling. Yeah. It's very important. Mm. Yeah. During those um, university years of studying, uh, those uh, predict predictions, uh, recognitions, did they uh, continue? And, uh, no, the, the, um, the projection stopped. Uh, what happened was after that six month period of that mm -hmm. physical, well, yeah, there was physical phenomena as well. Um, after all that awakening, it stopped completely. Mm -hmm. And it was as if Spirit was saying to me, we've shown you what we can do. Now are you going to come and try to open yourself up and try to connect to us? Because I feel as if they were saying, if you work hard, mm. if you show that you're interested, then you can work on what we've, sh what we've shown you may come back in the future. I don't know if it ever will. Mm -hmm. um, but I did make my mind up to um, do the best I could do. But again, it wasn't an easy journey. It wasn't an easy journey because I was wrestling with myself, who, my self-identity, who was I? Why was I getting all of this phenomena? Even though I understood it was a sensitive, mm. I couldn't understand why I was given all of this huge amount of phenomena. Did your grandparents still were alive? No, my grandparents were. Well, my grandfather had passed many years before. Um, and the funny thing is that I never spoke to my grandmother about it. It's a crazy thing to say that, but I never spoke to her about it. Because um, I feel as if my grandfather was the dominant force in that, that, in that um, mediumistic um, mm. connection that they had with each other and also through the spiritualist, their own spiritualist church, their own brand of spiritualism. Mm. Um, but my grandmother was aware of with certain things that was going on, but there wasn't much communication between myself and my grandmother about um, how to how to develop it and how to move forward in my life with it. Mm. For me, it wasn't just about developing my mediumship. That was only part of it. I think the bigger picture was the um, the spiritual awareness. The and the, we've spoken about previously about you know. And being aware of the bigger picture and, mm. and where you who you are and where you're going and what you what you want to do with your life and breaking out of the breaking out of the prison breaking out of the mold breaking out of um the self delusion and finding um finding that spark within oneself that is the true self and that which leads us into a more a deeper meaning of life mm. that helps us to um, understand who we are and how to get the best from ourselves. Mm. But it doesn't take away all the problems of life. Yeah. Because all the problems of life are still here. We, maybe it makes them a little bit easier to deal with. Mm. So you have that um, where, well, I would, I would say that, um, yeah, being aware of one's own self, being aware of one's own true self, sometimes makes life a little bit easier to handle mm. and deal with. Mm. Um, but yeah. What are your thoughts about our true selves in nowadays? What, what is our true self? Good question. What is our true self? I, for me, I think that's a very personal question and, and and we all may have different answers to that. For me, my true self is that most purest of energy, that, that connection to, to, the, to consciousness, but not just to consciousness, but to, um, to God. And um, that desire to feel that beautiful feeling that is our true self. Mm. We are beings of energy, we vibrate on a faster vibration yes. and we're here in a physical body to learn from this life. But mm. our true self, we are purity. I feel that the purity that is within us tries to show itself through our personality, 
through our, our true self, through our spiritual self. Mm. Um, but how do we define, how can we live in this life? Um, I don't feel as if that, that is part of who we are. That is the real us. That is the, mm. the real us is our spiritual self and tapping into that energy, tapping into that true self for me is um, a wonderful experience mm. um, because I know when I've connected to my own self, I've raised my vibration and when I raise my vibration I can then connect to higher or other beings who are trying to um, empower us, mm. uh, help us um, develop ourselves to uh, a point where we understand more about the world, the universe, um, the, the worlds within worlds. And um, so that aspect is very, very um, precious. Mm -hmm. to be able to um, to to connect to other um, vibrations yes because there are as you know we do have um, spiritual workers and we have a guide um, who, the guide who's always with us has been with me all my life mm -hmm. although I wasn't aware of it until my 30s and who's there and he's not a saint he tells me when I do things wrong that you know, maybe try something different the next time. Um, but they're very patient, pa very patient energies, very patient with me, um, because it took them a long time to get me to open up, to mm. understand um, uh, the bigger meaning, the bigger picture and the meaning of life is more than what we just have in mm. this physical life. Mm. Uh, let's go back um, to, to your uh, personal story. Um, when you was uh, finishing uh, those uh, uh, your studies, uh, what yeah. happened after that? I finished my study and I was starting to look at going to Alpha Finley College. Mm. I felt as if I needed a, um, something more in my spiritual development. And the Alpha Finley College had been in my mind for many years, yeah. but I had put it off because I was bringing in this, um, um, I, I was focusing on my studies at university. Mm -hmm. And I was at university for four years and um, college for one year. So it mm -hmm. took up quite a bit of my time. Mm -hmm. So in those years, I just had my spiritual group once a week mm -hmm. and I didn't do much more with my spiritual um, abilities. It was just there, but this, for whatever reason, um, the education part was important. Mm -hmm. I didn't know where it was leading me, but when I had finished my education there, I then decided to go to Alpha Finley College because I had the time. And um, it was an amazing experience because that house is so full of energy. It opened me up again. Um, it made me realise um, what was my ability was and what I could achieve and it gave me a new sense of purpose. Mm. It, it made me work harder, it made me work at my ability, it made me try to understand it more. And um, I went back the next year and I met Anu. Mm. And um, here we are, this Finnish woman and, and me were, were paired together trying to understand each other and it wasn't working because my Scottish, she couldn't understand, I couldn't understand her, her Finnish. And I never dreamed one iota that I would be coming to Finland. It wasn't on my radar at all. It wasn't. But, however, I had to started to trust my gut instinct. I had started to trust my intuition. Mm -hmm. And when I was asked to come to Finland to do some spiritual work, um, I said yes. Whereas in the past, I would have probably said no. So, the influence that this um, 
my own spiritual self was having on me was becoming greater and bigger mm. and making me um, trust myself and say, okay, let's do it, let's try it. And the I have to, I had not worked in public at all. Mm. I had not worked in the public sphere with my mediumship, no. And so when I came to Finland, I was working with Anu in the public mm. and that was scary. That was That's scary, me. putting myself out there and being vulnerable with my mediumship. Um, mm. But you know the strange thing is that when you're working and your helpers come in, you forget everything else mm. and you just do it. And I, it wasn't easy, but there was times when it was fabulous. There was times when I was struggling there was times when I was pulling my hair out, but I kept going. I had learned resilience. I had learned to trust myself a bit more. And these things, these things you need if you're going to work in public and be um, a medium or um, show off your, um, or, or, or share your mediumship with people in the public sphere. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing was, the cra the most, one of the craziest things that happened was that Anu had organised um, for us to be on um, uh, the biggest spiritual event in Finland. Um, only about mm, six months after I had come to Finland. And you got to remember that I have just started working with the public, 20, 30 people at a time. And I, Anu, had organised this for to to be in front of 500 people. You can imagine how I felt. Did you were in a hanging and tiran method or did you were in ultra private or where you were? Ultra private. Okay. Ultra okay. private. Yes, uh, uh, we were in ultra private, and um, I always remember going down to the stage uh, the, the day before and looking at all the people and thinking, "My God, what am I doing here?" <laughs> you know, the my. M my spiritual self inside would have been jumping up and down. Yes, yes, this is wonderful. But this part of me, my mind was fearful. Mm. But again, what happened was that even though my legs may have been shaking when I went onto that stage, when I started to work, everything just left me. All the fear went. It had just gone away. Mm. And I had the most wonderful wonderful experience with working with spirit mm -hmm. in front of 500 people it was the energy was powerful um, the messages were strong and I felt elated that I had managed to do that that spirit had actually put me in that position mm -hmm. to experience mm -hmm. um, to experience that it was very intimidating, but also very um, exhilarating mm. at the same time. And um, But then again, what happened after that was it was back to working probably in front of sometimes only 10 people, uh, 30 people, 40 people. And I had to learn how to deal with different energies. Mm. I had to learn um, to work in all different environments. Mm. Uh, can you tell a little, little bit more about your being a in medium and practicing that? Can you tell a little bit more about that? Well, trance is um, different from platform mediumship in the sense where platform mm. mediumship is an active mediumship. We're, mm. we're very much aware, we're, mm. we're, our energy is um, uh, very much active, that we're um, aware of what's going on, we're communicating with our senses, mm. we're communicating mm. through our clairvoyance, clairsentience, and um, the other abilities that we have. Uh, with trance, we're more passive, it's a more passive energy, mm. and you're not having to um, be alert, shall we say. Mm. Um, for me, as, as we know, there are many levels to, to trance. Um, mm. It starts off first with maybe sort of, um, um, inspirational speaking where mm. there's very much more your own spirit is actually being allowed to sort of um, um, say some philosophy, talk about philosophy and spiritual matters mm. and, and 
and then as you get more experienced and uh, allow yourself to go deeper there is a stronger connection, a stronger blend to um, to your own workers, to your helpers, mm. um, who are then able to um, you know speak more, um, more a more spiritual philosophy, um, um, a deeper connection, deeper sense of of togetherness on that on that um, uh, conscious level. Mm. Um, it's a work in progress, mm. as all mediumship is. It's a work in progress. Um, and I think when you work in trance, you become aware of the changes that take place in the energy. And you're aware of when the, your worker is so blended with you, it's like two minds coming together and become one mind. Mm. And you have to allow yourself to, to let go. You have to allow yourself to speak and be aware that, not to be aware of what you're saying, but just allow yourself to speak mm. and allow, the, allow your worker to influence, to, to um, say a few words. Mm -hmm. um, but again, as I said, that is um, an area where I'm still working on, an area where I'm trying to um, improve my, my um, connection um, get a deeper blend and allow that to mm. go into where it's going to go. Mm. I don't know where it's going to go. Um, mm. I suppose that's up to um, my spiritual helpers if that's an area that they want to advance. Mm. Um, but I do believe in trying different things to see mm. where you feel comfortable and, and what mm. makes you feel alive. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, quite many people uh, he says that uh, uh, when they are doing this mediumship work, uh, they have uh, some uh, personal spirits who are uh, uh, helping them to do this work. Do yeah. you have uh, someone special spirit who is uh, helping you to work, do this work? Yeah, I, I, my belief is that, as I said before, that um, we, each one of us has a guide who is with us and doesn't change. Mm. They are with us for this whole journey. And then we have spiritual workers mm. who come in to help us with specific um, things that maybe we can um, try out if it's, um, mm. if it's platform or one-to-one -one readings or philosophy um, or trance work or even if you have a physical ability to help you with all these different things. Mm. But I also, feel, I also feel that your workers are not just there for the spiritual aspect. I feel that your workers are also there to help you in, any, in other aspects of your life. Mm. to bring that spirituality um, through whatever you're doing, whether it's, whether it's um, creative writing, mm. trying to write something in a spiritual way, um, in a creative way, anything that is creative and that inspires you and helps other people, I believe, mm. that your workers are there with you, um, trying to bring that the best out of you, not mm. just your mediumship. Mm. Yeah. But yes, um, to answer the question, yes, I believe that I have one guide who works with me, is with me always, and I do have a signature with him and I know when he's here mm -hmm. because he puts a patch mm -hmm. of energy over my left eye mm -hmm. and yeah. I know it's him. That's my, that's his signature to mm -hmm. me that he's there okay. and, and I have a very strong bond with that, with that energy. Mm -hmm. and, um, and again, my belief is that there are other workers who come in and go and help you with other aspects of of your mm. mediumship. Mm. As a medium, do you see the dead people who is coming to the, uh, see other? Uh, I don't see people. dead people. I see alive people. <laughs> Good as way we, to as we it. say, you know, life is eternal, mm. and when we are finished with this physical body, when it's time for us to move back to our real selves, into mm. a spiritual self, then we are released from the physical body because the physical body is, is depleted. We go back to her true self, which is our spiritual self. Mm. I see spiritual people in my mind's eye. I don't see them with my own mm. eyes, no. But when I'm working, I am given glimpses of those people in mm. the spirit world, yes. Yes. Um, nowadays, you are doing this work also together with Anu. Yes. Uh, you have been uh, 
doing this work uh, around Finland, uh, I believe. Yes. Can you tell a little bit more about those your sessions when you do work together? Do you have some specific uh, things? Uh, what is uh, your role and her role? Well, it's quite easy. I connect to the spirit and I give the messages in English and Anna translates. Mm. And we have it down to a good working relationship where I hold on to the message, I hold on to the messenger, I hold on to the spirit person and give a little piece of information, Anu translates it. And then I'll give another piece of information, Anu translates it. Um, and then Anu will do her own mediumship mm. and finish. So, um, so I'm always trying to hold on to the energy and mm. trying to hold on to the, the people, the spiritual people who are coming to see their family and their friends. Um, I have to hold on a little bit harder because with mediumship, the flow is important, the energy is important, and flowing, going with it, and, and giving that, 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 that information, is, is, there's, there's a flow to it. Mm. So when you're having to stop and start, you have to work a little bit harder, mm. I found, <laughs> to hold on to, to, to that connection. Sometimes it's wonderful, sometimes it flows, and other times it doesn't, it's more difficult. But always, we always try to do our best. Mm. We always try to do our best. And, bring, and try to bring something different to people. Try to make them understand. It's, for us, it's not just about messages, it's, it's, it's about the whole, the whole platform for us is, is about bringing people together. Mm. Allowing them to feel that divine spiritual energy uplifting them even if they don't get a message by playing some music and and allowing them to try and find their own s spiritual self in in that that time that we have together um and yeah it's um as i say you know sometimes it's wonderful and sometimes it's a bit more difficult mm. but i've learned not to give up <laughs> yes that's one thing I have learned is not to give up. Do you have some uh, any special message for uh, those audience who is watching this video later? Uh, do you have something what you want to share with them until we stop this interview? Sure. I think if anyone's interested in listening to what I've been saying, um, I think mediumship in itself is is a platform for someone to show their ability. Um, to get in touch with their own spirit and to um, to share that to share that um, energy with other people, but I don't think mediumship in itself. Everyone doesn't need to be a medium to feel that spiritual energy within them. Mm -hmm. I think the message that I would say to anyone is actually is if you have issues in your life, if there's problems that you can't solve, um, try going within yourself, try and find that spiritual aspect of yourself inside and, and listen to, to what it's saying to you to, to help you move forward in your life, to take, to take chances but to take good chances to show that um, you're listening to your intuitive self, you're listening to your spiritual self and see what happens. It doesn't happen overnight, it takes time, it takes persistence, it takes um, understanding but if you persevere if you if you listen to your spiritual self then you open up a part of yourself that you may not have understood before and it may open up doors to you that you would never thought would open up in your life you never know where it can take you you never know how much your life can change and that's just the message that I would like to send out to people is just to um, Focus on that inner self mm. and see what happens. Yes. Yeah. We are not this pack of bones. No, uh, Our sp nature is spiritual. There's so much more to us in this life rather than just uh, this physical life with, where, where five senses makes sense of everything that's going on here. There is so much more if we open up our consciousness, if we tap into that higher vibration if we become aware of that world that we can't see but we can feel and allow that 
energy, allow our own spiritual self to guide us more, to, to help us to um, appreciate life more. Mm. That's, um, that in itself is, um, I think, worthwhile investigating. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Alan. That was very great honor to me to meet you and have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Timo, for having me here. And it was nice to, to sit and um, chat to someone who seems like a good friend. I feel exactly the same. Kiitoksia myös teille katsojat, että seurasitte tämän ohjelman. Palataan taas ensi vieraaseen ensi jaksossa. Morjesta.